Hello, my name is Andy and I am the Village Idiot. I'm armed with a car and a GoPro and an unhealthy amount of time on my hands. I'm using that time to attempt to visit every civil parish in England. You're watching the Rushcliffe series. This is the southernmost district in Nottinghamshire and it contains 59 civil parishes of England. And there's some corkers down here. Let's dive in and check one out. Welcome back to Rushcliffe again, everybody, and to the biggest one we've done so far in this series. Now, before we get cracking, and this is gonna be a good two hour walk, I want to show you something. Here we've got something of a local viewpoint, and you can see that we are definitely on the Nottinghamshire Wolds here. There they are in the distance. It's very, very hilly over there, and it looks absolutely beautiful, despite the fact the weather is, is not exactly great. <laughs> Hopefully it's gonna improve as we go around this place. Hope you're ready for a long walk. Welcome to Keyworth. Here's my disclaimer for people who may be watching me for the first time. I say things as I would in my native accent and dialect. As a result, I may not pronounce things in the same way as the locals do. Remember, I'm a visitor. It's impossible to know everything. Leave me a comment, spin me a like and bash that subscribe button. Let's get to today's parish video. Keyworth, key or stone enclosure. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the largest village we've covered so far in Rushcliffe, and by some margin. This is Keyworth, which sits on a broad hilltop six miles to the southeast of Nottingham. Once a small linear village just over a century ago, rapid 20th century development has vastly increased the size of this one, so much so it can almost be considered a small town. Keyworth was historically associated with the framework knitting industry. Remnants of that still survive on its main street, in the form of Attenborough's Yard. There are some other ancient landmarks too, like the church and Martin's Barn, but the one thing most people know this one for is its former windmill. Demolished in the 1950s, the windmill has become a symbol of Keyworth. Many landmarks around the village use it, and there's even a pub called the Windmill too, even though it's nowhere near where it once stood. The most significant expansion took place throughout the 1950s, 60s and 70s, and now Keyworth is mainly a commuter settlement for Nottingham. It had, and still has, some notable residents, including two former MPs, Kenneth Clark and Ed Balls, and the artistic gymnast Sam Oldham, who won a bronze medal in the London 2012 Olympics. So in short, there's a lot here. Shall we get going? I think so. We start this lengthy journey around the village at Keyworth Cemetery, which is officially known as a lawn burial ground. For several years, this was tended to by groundsman Mick White, who now has a bench dedicated to him here. As final resting places go, surely this is up there with the best. From here, you get a great view into the Nottinghamshire countryside, because you're on a hill. This is Weissel Lane, which is at the southernmost tip of the village. As you head north, it bends left and becomes Main Street. This is Keyworth's oldest inhabited road, and it has plenty of history. First up along here is the Salutation Inn, the oldest of the three pubs in the village. This was established in around 1675, when it was first recorded as a hostelry. The Salutation has recently reopened after a 12-month closure. During that time, it underwent a £275,000 refurbishment. Just up from the pub is a row of terraced cottages. This is Attenborough's yard, and it's where Keyworth's framework knitters would once have lived. They were built in the 18th century. At that time, Main Street would have had many more similar rows. 
This row is the only one that survives today. Framework knitting was a big part of Keyworth's industrial past. By the 1860s, it was the village's main source of employment and boosted the population to 900 by 1881. At that time, Main Street was called Town Street. Keyworth specialised in the manufacture of gloves rather than the traditional cotton hose. As the demand for well-lit workshops and workers' housing intensified, the yards sprang up between and behind existing buildings. The last manufacturer, Pike and Gunn, closed in 1959. Today, only two traditional workshop buildings with their typically large windows survive. Farming was also important. This building is Martin's Barn. It's Grade 2 listed and was built in 1651 by a farmer called George Martin. Its walls were originally wattle and daub, but these were later replaced by bricks in a herringbone pattern. It was originally used as a grain store and its roof was thatched. Everything we've seen so far is within Keyworth's conservation area, and so too is this post office. It's no surprise, really. Main Street was, after all, the village's principal thoroughfare historically. The proximity of the crowded buildings to the highway gives it a distinctly urban feel. Shops are a major feature of Keyworth and have been for centuries. As Main Street reaches its end, several start to come into view. As well as the post office, the range of shops and services in the village include pharmacies, small supermarkets, convenience stores, a hardware store, hairdressers, news agents, butchers, dry cleaners and florists. There's also a branch of Bird's Bakery which was opened in 2018 and stands where a former Nat West Bank used to be. That's not on Main Street though, it's around the corner at the end because this isn't even the main shopping area. So even though it's a village, it does feel like a small town, Keyworth. It's actually really, really big. And uh, basically, you name it, this place has probably got it in terms of shops. We've now reached the main shopping area. <laughs> the street we've walked down is not even the main area. It's this here. This is known as the square. And this has plenty more things to talk about. The thriving Keyworth Square is the commercial centre of the village. And it's also the busiest part of the place too. It wasn't always like this. Only a century ago, Keyworth was a small rural hamlet focused around its church, and the square contained the village cross, a water pump and a pinfold. Times have changed significantly, that's for sure. These days, as well as to shop, you'd also come to the square to catch a bus. The village is served primarily by the number 853, but Trent Barton also operates the Keyworth, which links it to Nottingham via Plumtree, Tolerton and Edwalton. Commercial Road now, which takes us around the back of the square. This building is the massive Keyworth Primary Care Centre, which opened in 2007. It replaced the Keyworth Health Centre, which had formerly served the village since 1970. Before that, the local doctors held surgeries in their own homes. This is the Key Club, one of three gyms and health clubs in the village. That's a very high number, even if the place is so big. One of the others is the Keyworth Leisure Centre, and the third is on a small industrial estate on Debdale Lane. Health and fitness is definitely a theme in this place. Back into the middle of the village, here we have the church dedicated to St Mary Magdalene. It dates from the 14th century and was restored in 1874 and again in 1884. This is Keyworth's only Grade 1 listed building. It has an unusual 15th century octagonal lantern tower and its shape has earned it a cracking nickname, the Keyworth Coffee Pot. There's no mention of a church in the Doomsday Book, but there must have been one in Keyworth before the present building. Even though there are no identifiable pre-14th century remains, the list of incumbents dates back to 1268. Religious buildings can also be found on Selby Lane, which also developed with the framework knitting industry. Just up the road from the junction is the Keyworth Methodist Church. This was built in 1881 and replaced a former chapel on Elm Avenue, which dated back to 1828. Religiously, Keyworth was a non-conformist hotbed, and in 1872, Selby Lane was at the centre of a bitter dispute known as the Battle of the Board. The establishment of a non-denominational board school was met with strong opposition by the Anglicans, who had built a national school a decade prior. That still stands. Built in 1862 and now St Mary Magdalene's Church Hall, this is the school erected by the Anglicans. It's safe to say that given this still stands, they won the battle. As for the non-denominational board school, that was pulled down in 1985. Now Keyworth has three schools and we'll see them all shortly. Next up it's the Village Hall. 
This is famous for the Keyworth Village Quiz, an annual competition held in the hall between teams representing local organisations. It began in 1976 and runs for seven or eight weeks. The participants compete in University Challenge style head-to-head -head matches. The hall can be found on the edge of the Rectory playing field and so too can several sports clubs. For almost 55 years, Keyworth has had a very successful table tennis club. It has 11 teams that play in various Nottingham and District table tennis leagues, but it also holds social sessions too. The playing fields are notable in and of themselves. They occupy the site of an ancient medieval ridge and furrow system, and so in places it's rather lumpy and bumpy. Every July, the Keyworth Show takes place here. It includes a horticultural show, a fairground, and various other displays. A small section of the fields is given over to a memorial garden. Known as the Peace Garden to the locals, this quiet green space was created to remember those lost to war. Nearby are the striking memorial gates, which bear plaques featuring the names of all the village's war heroes. They lead us to Nottingham Road and the United Reformed Church. This was built in 1903 as a congregational church and replaced an older building in the process. Next door is Webster Hall, the base of the Keyworth School of Theatre Dance. Founded in 1976, it has well over 200 members. I think the best thing about all that is it's all clustered together in one area. We haven't gone really very far because literally just down there, a couple of steps, it'll take you less than a minute, you'll be back in the square. It's, everything is right in the center of Keyworth. So now we're gonna go a little bit further afield and things are gonna get a little bit more spaced out, a little bit more sparse, but there are some cracking landmarks to the north of the village, including the British Geological Survey. That's gonna be interesting when we get to that. The theme of schools and churches continues before things get really far out. After passing these pretty ladybirds on some railings, we come to the first of the primary schools. This is Keyworth Primary and Nursery School, which was built in the 1960s. It was originally a large junior school, but now caters for children between the ages of 2 and 11. It has approximately 140 children on roll, including 20 who are part-time within the foundation unit. Next door is the Baptist Church. Since 1993, its congregation has gathered every Sunday morning in the school hall for worship. On Church Drive is the South Wolds Academy in sixth form, a secondary school which opened in 1967. It can cater for a maximum of 1114 students. It specialises in languages and, unusually, used to offer Japanese. This was because it had links to a school in Nagano, Japan. Church Drive has quite a bit. Next door is the library, which is open five days a week. It has both dementia-friendly and breastfeeding-friendly status, according to the Parish Council's website. And next door to that is the Young People's Centre, designed for Keyworth teenagers. It runs three generic sessions a week. It's Keyworth Leisure Centre next, which may look a little outdated, but soon that's going to change. Late last year, Rushcliffe Borough Council pledged to make £4 million worth of improvements to both this and a sister leisure centre at Cockgrave. Cockgrave will be worked on first, but the plans will see both buildings become carbon neutral. At Church Drive's junction with Wolds Drive is the second co-op store. This is complemented by a row of shops on the other side of the road, known as the Parade. This contains Davison's, one of two veterinary practices in the village. The other is on Main Street. The Keyworth Tavern on Fairway has been serving this central part of the village since the 1960s. It was built with the housing estate in which it sits, a triangle formed by Nicker Hill, Selby Lane and Nottingham Road. When the County Council was looking for areas for new housing development in the 1960s, it was faced with the problem of avoiding designated greenbelt areas. This was all agricultural land, but it was already compromised as greenbelt because it was within that triangle. The decision therefore was made to develop it, and now it's a residential area, primarily for commuters.
On Nicker Hill you'll come to the HQ of the British Geological Survey, which has been here since 1976. It sits on the site of the former Mary Ward Teacher Training College, a Roman Catholic institution founded by the Loreto Sisters, which opened in 1968. The British Geological Survey aims to advance geoscientific knowledge of the United Kingdom landmass and its continental shelf by means of systematic surveying, monitoring and research. It was founded in 1835 by the Board of Ordnance, under the directorship of Henry de la Beche. It was the world's first national geological survey. We've rounded a corner now, and off Platt Lane many new build properties can be seen. Also up here is Platt Lane Recreation Ground. Keyworth Cricket Club play here. They used to play on the rectory playing fields until 2012, but its uneven ground made it tricky for outfielders. This is also the home of Keyworth United Football Club, who were founded way back in 1876. In 1988 they played Nottingham Forest here in a pre-season friendly. Over 2,000 people watched the game, which Forest won 7-0. Visiting manager Brian Clough spent the entire afternoon signing autographs. On the Cricket Club Pavilion's wall is a plaque which tells us the playing fields were opened in 1979 by the mayor of Fainies, John Jarros. Fainies is Keyworth's twin town and it's in northern France, right on its border with Belgium. Keyworth even has a street called Fainies Court off Adams Hill. Speaking of streets, we're now following a footpath which slices its way between the playing fields and all these new builds. It seems as though it's running into the middle of nowhere, but it eventually emerges at a hilltop, which gives you a breathtaking view into the Nottinghamshire countryside. So at this point in the walk, the hustle and bustle of the square seems a heck of a long way away, doesn't it? And actually, we have walked a long distance here. This is as far away from the square as you can get. And so now it's time to turn around and head back towards where we started. And before we do, I think it's just well worth admiring that view for a while, isn't it? It's absolutely amazing. I can see for quite a long way into the distance over there. Don't know whether you can. But trust me, if you follow this route yourself, this point will be magnificent, hopefully, on a good day. The sun is starting to come out up there, so hopefully this looks good. Let's keep walking. We've now reached the final school, Crossdale Drive Primary. The most famous pupil ever taught here was former Labour MP Ed Balls. He grew up in Keyworth and since 1998 has been married to current Labour MP Yvette Cooper. In 2008 the pair became the first ever married couple to serve together in the cabinet. Crossdale Drive is otherwise one of a number of streets that make up this 20th century housing estate to the north of the village. Less than a century ago all of this was open fields. Most of Keyworth's housing stock was added in the 1950s, 60s and 70s. A crazy fast expansion. At the bottom of the street we run into Adams Hill and in turn this links us back to Nottingham Road. The next landmark is the Windmill Pub. This takes its name from the actual mill which has become a Keyworth symbol. The mill which stood on Selby Lane was demolished in 1956 to make way for brand new houses. As for the pub, this has a different history. It used to be called the Pear Tree Inn, and back in 2018 it was closed and described by local news wires as tired looking. It's recently had a £300,000 makeover and it's in business again. An old phone box stands right outside. Over the road is another big shop, this time a Sainsbury supermarket. Keyworth certainly isn't short of retail premises. On the next corner is a chip shop which occupies a building called the Plum Tree. I suspect there was maybe another pub here. That's just a hunch, but regardless, fish and chips have been served here since 1996. On Debdale Lane is another small handful of businesses, including a beauty salon, a barber's and a gift shop. The only other thing of note beyond these is the industrial estate which has the aforementioned gym. So it's a left turn onto Manor Road and here's a montage of its entire length.
I'll tell you what, Man of Road will sort out the men from the boys. It's a steep old climb at the bottom. It flattens out at the top, but trust me, to get to this point, you've, had to, you've got to have had some Weetabix in the morning, let me tell you that much. <laughs> okay, we're almost back to the beginning. At the end of the road, we're gonna take a, I think it's a right turn and then instantly a left turn, or it might be left and right. I can't remember which way around it is. It takes us through another housing estate, goes around the back of the square, and it brings us out back on the road where we began. So we are virtually at the end now. I can't imagine there's much left, quite frankly. And there isn't, to be honest. Bunny Lane has an opticians, which is this building here, but aside from that, it's all residential now. Speaking of residents, key with his home to the former MP and Chancellor of the Exchequer, Kenneth Clark, and Sam Oldham, who won a bronze medal in artistic gymnastics at the London 2012 Olympics. Professor Melanie Leng, the chief scientist at the British Geological Survey, also lives here, and you can't really blame her for doing so. It really is a gorgeous place in which to reside. Here's one final montage through the Brookview Drive Estate to the end. And here we are then back at the burial ground and uh, it's taken me just over two hours to walk all the way around Keyworth. Big place, big place, but well worth coming to. That sun is quite high in the sky now, so it's uh, it's quite warm too. But luckily I've got a, a nice cool drink waiting for me in the car, in the uh, car park over there. So uh, I'll get that down my neck in a moment. You know what? Keyworth is absolutely one of the best places I've done so far, to be honest with you. The scenery, you wouldn't expect you know, how good the scenery is around here. Nottinghamshire is a very underappreciated county when it comes to the scenery. Places like Derbyshire and Yorkshire, even Lincolnshire to a certain degree, they sort of get all the plaudits. Nottinghamshire gets kind of forgotten. But you know what? It's a beautiful place. And I think more people should walk around these Nottinghamshire villages because they're well worth it. They are from my perspective anyway. I just love Nottinghamshire, as you know. Now that you're familiar with Keyworth, this footage shows another route around the village, which is seen annually by a group of runners. This film, courtesy of Colin Brearley, follows the route of the Keyworth Turkey Trot. It's a half marathon road race, which the local scout group has been holding annually since 1983, normally on the second Sunday in December. It attracts hundreds of participants. The race wasn't run in 2020 due to COVID-19, but now it's back on and it's scheduled yearly again going forward. Enjoy.
And we are done. Now, I don't want to end on a sour note, but I've purposely avoided any mention of Keyworth's most infamous piece of history, a crime which was only cracked 15 years ago. If you want to read more about it, there's links below. For now, I'm off for a lie down. That one was epic. See you later. Thanks for watching this video folks don't forget to like this episode if you haven't already it really makes a difference with youtube if you're new here subscribe to the channel for more videos like this and give us a share too if you've got friends who'd like it you can find all the links to my social media accounts below as well as my buy me a coffee page where you can donate to the channel also if you've enjoyed this episode have a look at some more videos in this series until next time i've been andy also known as the village idiot and i'm out <laughs>